Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Dr. Mooney and in this video, which is a series actually of internship basics, we are going to talk about uh, pediatric posting. I am posted as a pediatric intern in labor room, which is quite hectic. So we are going to talk about the things that you need to go through. Now as soon as the baby is delivered, the gynec piece is going to clamp the umbilical cord and give the baby to you. So the first step is to receive. First step out of five steps is to receive the baby. You go with the green cloth. It's usually large, but you fold it up and you go and receive. Act very fast, be mentally present, okay? As soon as you have received the baby, see if the baby is crying or not. If the baby is crying, good for you. If the baby is not crying, please call your PG and start rubbing uh, the baby vigorously. Now, don't, don't be very gentle with the baby. You are like, okay, this is a baby, I'm going to be very gentle with it. No, you need to rub very vigorously so that the baby cries. Once the baby has started crying, you will come up from the labor room to the wall. This is a moment in which heater is always on. Okay, as soon as you are going to be, you will be informed. A delivery is going to take place in 10 minutes, 15 minutes. So, you turn on the heater before that. So, that it gets all heat up. And you'll come with the baby and you'll put him in the him or her in the warmer. The rest of the steps you're gonna do in the warmer, not out of the that place. So for now, I have a baby here, but I cannot use him for the demonstration. But imagine this being a baby. So you have a baby who is crying. Next step, if not if he is not crying, you you'll call uh, the PC and you'll just uh, rub him or her very vigorously. Put the next step will be to put C pep which is positive pressure ventilation if the baby is not crying. I'll demonstrate you that one in a bit. But let's say the baby is crying. The next step would be to suction. If you see some sort of mucus or amniotic fluid in the mouth or in the nose and he's not breathing properly or he has some chest retractions, the next step would be to uh, use a suction. Now this is a vacuum that you need to turn on. Here it's already on because there are a lot of deliveries that happen in this labor room. And this is this is the tube that will come, 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 come. And this is the end part that you need to know about. So this I already have in my head. So you turn on the vacuum. It will create a vacuum in the tube and it will suction everything. Now how to do suction in the neonates? You are not going to put it in the center of the mouth. I cannot open the mask, I'm sorry. But you cannot put this tube, okay. This is the part that you need to put in. You uh, cannot enter this directly into the mouth like into the center of the mouth you start from the sides you only suction from the sides you suction for up to this much length approximately you put it in and the vacuum will eventually suction all the, everything that needs to be suctioned out that being done then you'll put it in the nose you can do it in any order then you'll put it in the nose and then the suctioning is done if the baby was not crying initially in 60 to 70 percent of the cases baby will start crying after suctioning even if the rub was not working suction will work so the baby will uh, respond probably if the baby is still not responding even after the suctioning then you'll turn on to CPAP you'll uh, move to next step which is CPAP positive pressure ventilation I'll tell you about that I think at the end of the video the next part is to clamp the uh, umbilical cord now usually gynec PG Okay, imagine this being a baby. Okay, or this being the umbilical cord. You'll be given like this. This is the umbilical cord and the PGB clamp it with the scissor here. What you'll do is put it in the baby is still in the warm, okay? Use this thing. This is known as an umbilical cord clamp. Okay, I've already fixed this one right. This is a new umbilical cord clamp. Open this up. This is an opened umbilical cord. Umbilical uh, clamp, sorry. The gynec PG gave you. This is the umbilicus. And this is the umbilical cord. The baby is here. This is my head is baby, okay? Imagine, just imagine everything. You need to put the umbilical cord clamp 1 to 2 centimeter away from the umbilicus. 1 to 2 centimeter. But we usually do it two fingers put it like this from the umbilicus and then put it over here that's what textbook teaches us one to two centimeter but usually because we sometimes need to take venous sampling uh, from the umbilical umbilical cord so you put it a little farther away okay 
more than like two fingers definitely it's more than two fingers right so you put the uh, umbilical cord cam and you fix it like close it i don't know if it's done okay done you see the cord is clamped the extra part of the umbilical cord this is the baby okay baby umbilicus umbilical cord umbilical clamp then done make sure you have uh, properly closed this because if you haven't the baby will bleed the umbilical vessels has a lot of uh, blood the next thing is to cut the remaining part of the cord this is the blade you can use any number of the blade and you cut the remaining part of the okay i'm going to cut the baby then baby short umbilical cord then the next thing is to weigh the baby you'll put the baby on the weighing machine and done you need to weigh even uh, stillborn babies or the babies uh, who are a case of iud which is intrauterine death so you need to uh, weigh those as well that's done the next the last part and the most important part for the babies is to check if they have tef which is transesophageal fistula or anal fistula this is thing this is the uh, feeding tube infant feeding tube open it up you see smaller smaller than the vacuum uh, this much length it's it's very thin you see what you do is this is to check congenital abnormalities this is very very important do not forget about this one three things that you need to check fistula is one two second injection third step so what you do is open up the kya naam inka ping nahi ya nahi ya nahi ab wo kya hai muskan ब्लैक मार्किंग है I don't know if you will be. You see this black marking, okay? You need to insert the tube. Okay. Usually, you check the um, length of how much tube you need to put by checking from this to the end of the nose here, and then to the sternum. This is uh, the zygoid process. So about this much tube. Not on me, on the baby, okay? You you usually calculate, but if you don't have uh, time to calculate and you have a lot of deliveries coming up, so you'll just put the tube inside the mouth. in the stomach up until the black mark okay again the same rule you won't put it in uh, from the center you'll just put it from the uh, we usually put it from the left side so you put it from the corner of the mouth and you just keep on in, uh, inserting this one once it has crossed that black mark what you're going to do is be very very fast because babies will usually try to catch everything and they might cough do not be worried it's fine I'll try to uh, show you a live demonstration of this thing, and then you uh, use your steto, put this on his heart, uh, his stomach, and then push air. You should uh, hear a gush from something like this. What you uh, he heard here, like this sort of sound. Once you heard that through the stethoscope, it means that the baby doesn't have TEF, which is transesophageal fistula. Now you're going to use the same tube, uh, put in, uh, put it inside the anal canal. and if you see any sort of meconium and if the tube is going smoothly it means the, that the baby doesn't have any anal fistula so that's how it's done now i'll show you on the live demonstration on a baby that i need to do this one okay so these were the five steps i think that's that's everything that you need to do clinically another one important thing that you need to do is to make a new natal form This is also very very easy. I think uh, I need to make an another video on this one, but that's all that you need to do. Okay. Sometimes you might need to um, prepare uh, the laryngoscope tray. 
sometimes you need to incubate the baby but you won't do it like we uh, we are not allowed to incubate the baby but you should have everything ready so that the pg will come and do everything i need to clean this up all the mess that i have created but i'll show you a cpap and i'll show you the test and then we'll see how to do it okay bye bye